الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين وكفى والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن سن سنته واهتدى بهديه إلى يوم الدين ما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون ما أريد منهم من رزق وما أريد أن يطعمون إن الله هو الرزاق ذو القوة المتين وقال الله تبارك وتعالى فذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون صدق الله العظيم ما ديا إن رسبكتر بردن سيدنا الإسلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله ما ديا بردن سيدنا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is so great that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a healthy body and in that healthy body Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put a healthy mind and a heart. And Allah in Quran have said, وَاللَّهُ أَخْرَجَكُمْ مِن بُطُونِ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ شَيْئًا And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفِدَةً لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Allah said, Allah gave you a, a complete body in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, said eyes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put a heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, put all of these organs. And you did not manufacture those organs for yourself. You did not create those organs for yourself. In fact, if you try to create a another organ in your body or if a certain or organ will fail you will not be able to um, create an organ but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his infinite mercy gave you a healthy body and brother and sister Allah in Quran have said that لَن يَخْلُقُوا ذُبَابًا وَلَا وَجْتَمَعُولًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said human beings are so much um, dependent upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if all human beings will come together to make a fly, just a fly, how small a fly is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said all the human beings will fail to create one fly. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created you and me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given us this healthy body. So with the mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given to us, we think, we plan, we plan our life. It is all because Allah has given us a healthy body. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on top of that, send prophets alayhi salatu was salam to remind us. So if we start thinking the wrong way prophets remind us that we should come back to the straight way the straight path so prophets had been sent by Allah to remind human beings when they start thinking the wrong way when they start going the wrong path then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent with these prophets books divine books these divine books are reminders to us. Now my dear brothers and sisters, on top of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes uh, certain incidents happen in everybody's life. And those incidents had been uh, created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that when we are in slumber, when we are drifting away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these uh, incidents remind us that we were going the wrong way we should make a u-turn and come back to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah in the Quran have said awala yarawna annahum yuftanuna fi kulli aamim marratan aw marratayn thumma la yatubun wala hum yadhakroon don't you see that every year, in every year of your life, there are certain incidents that happen. And those incidents should be a wake-up call for you. 
So my dear, dear brothers and sisters, all these things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created for you and me, the purpose is one. And that purpose is that human beings should correct their ways. Human beings should follow a siratul mustaqim, the straight path, the path of, of Islam. Now my dear brothers and sisters, think what a great book Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have sent in the form of Quran. And in this book, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching you and me the purpose of our life. No book in the world is teaching you the purpose of your life. Only Quran is teaching us the purpose of our life. Why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us? And these three ayahs that I recited to you in the beginning, these three ayahs are teaching us the purpose of our life. And look at these ayahs. Allah said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا I have not created insan, human being, and jinns, but for only one purpose, liya'budun, so that they should worship me. To worship Allah is the purpose of our life. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right after this, I said, مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقِ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُتْعِمُونَ I do not want anything from you. I don't want anything from you. I don't want you to feed me. I don't want you to benefit me. No. You worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your own good. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when it comes to benefiting people, you people cannot benefit me. I, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will benefit you and will fulfill all of your needs. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Inna allaha huwa razzaq dhul quwwatil mateen No doubt Allah is the one who is the provider. He will provide you with all of your needs. He is ar razzaq the provider. And dhul quwwa and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not weak. Allah is extremely strong. Dhul Quwa. And Al Mateen. Al Mateen means Allah is the best planner. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had planned your life. And Allah had planned everything that is happening in this world. So Al Mateen means a very, very good planner. Allah's planning is very deep. I often think, brothers and sisters, and I would like to you to develop this habit if you can. And that is Al Mateen, this Sifat of Allah, this quality of Allah, Al Mateen, the planner. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plans our life. The best manifestation of Allah's quality of Al Mateen is in your plate of food. When you have different kinds of food in one plate, you took from different dishes, right? Different kinds of food that is on the table, and now, now you made your own plate. And then you put a bread on top of it. And now you are sitting on the table with a plate full of food in front of you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Abasa said, if you want to see my quality of al mateen look into your plate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'm not saying, I'm just conveying this message to you. Allah says, fal yanzulil insanu ila ta'ami anna sababna al ma asabba thumma shakakna al arda shakka. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you should always look into your plate of food. And now think that this food that is in, in your plate, how many stages this food had gone through before it finally landed on your 
plate. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Anna sabab dal ma asabba. Think about the first step in this long process of food. And the first one is water. Think how water came down from the sky. A whole science, right? How water is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, anna sabab nal ma, how the rain water comes down. And then, thumma shakak nal arda shakka. And how a tiny, feeble drop of water from the sky, when it hits the barren land, right? It pierces the chest of the earth. And then when this tiny drop of water goes inside the earth, it helps the earth in, in, in making sure that the small plant, the small seed that somebody planted, right? Now that seed develops into a feeble tiny plant. And that's, that feeble tiny plant becomes so powerful that it, it breaks the chest of the earth and it comes out. From that one drop of water, Allah said, I create different kinds of vegetations. So Allah mentions some name, right? فَأَمْبَتْنَا فِيهَا حَبَّا Grain, وَعِنَبَا Grapes, fruits, وَقَضْبَا You know, cucumbers, وَزَيْتُونَ زَيْتُونَ Olive, وَنَخْلَا And then every, all the greenery that you see there, all the vegetables, all the fruits that you see out there, Allah said, I had created that using water. Then Allah said, lakum wali an'amikum. This fruit, this vegetable that I have created, this is food for you and for your animals. So Allah is saying, فَلْيَنْزُرِ insanu ila ta'ami. Before eating, think. Think. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is creating it. Nobody else. Nobody can. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, in the 14th juz of Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, don't eat like animals eat without thinking. Right? Right? No, uh, in another place, Allah says, Ya'kuluna kama ta'kulun an'am. Ya'kuluna kama ta'kulun an'am. Am I quoting right? Huh? Ya'kuluna, right? Ya'kuluna kama ta'kulun an'am, wa naru mathwal lahum. Like that, there's people who eat food like animals do, without thinking, without appreciating. You know, without saying Alhamdulillah. Alladhi at'amana wa saqana wa ja'alana minal muslim. They don't, they don't even say Bismillah in the beginning. This food comes and here they start eating. Right? So that don't eat like animals eat. But think about food, how it was produced by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How it was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in this ayah said, Inna Allah huwa razzaq No doubt it is Allah and Allah only who is the provider. Dhul quwa. And Allah is all powerful. Al mateen. And he is the best planner. His planning is very detailed. Now my dear brothers and sisters, one thing is sure 
in the light of this ayah that Allah and Allah only is ar razaq Whatever food, whatever we need, our needs are fulfilled only and only by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, let's ask Allah only for our, for our needs. Let's believe firmly and strongly that only Allah has the power to fulfill our needs. So my dear brothers and sisters, Allah is the only one who provides and who fulfill our needs. Then my dear, dear brothers and sisters, we, would, we should dedicate as much time as we can in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the purpose for which Allah had created you and me is worship. If worship of Allah is not part of your religion, sorry, part of your life, then you are come wasting your life. Your life is a waste. <clears throat> and because you are not doing what for which you were created for. Right? And don't look at the person sitting next to you. Don't bother about his life. Because many among us have this weakness, this problem that we always look at others. Oh, that person is a bad person. He doesn't does ibad to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, brothers, don't, don't do this. Lakum deenukum waliyadeen. He has his own life, you have your own life. Fakulli amali walakum amalukum. Antum bariuna imma amal wa ana bariuna imma ta'amalun. I have my amal, you have your amal. So forget about others. Brothers and sisters, I, if, if, I were you, if I were to ask you and don't answer me because it's your personal life, but as a reminder, for a reminder, how many among you really got up today and prayed for your salah on time? How many among you? How many among you prayed Isha Salah last night before going to sleep? How many among you prayed all five salah, for example, yesterday? Because if you are saying that, yes, I wanted to pray, but I was busy. I was extremely busy. I wanted to pray, but my tight schedule did not allow me to pray. The answer under the light of Quran and Hadith is what? You are a liar. You are lying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you did not want to pray. That's why Allah did not let you pray. Right? If you really wanted to pray, Allah would have let you pray. My dear brothers and sisters, this hadith that I'm going to quote to you, I wish all of you can remember this hadith. I wish. Some of you are very interested in Islam, others are not. So many among us don't take these hadith very seriously. They just listen and they say, okay, whatever. But Alhamdulillah, some of you are very, very interested. So for those people who are interested, I would like you to please remember this, this, this uh, hadith because in today's modern fast-paced life, this hadith should help you like nothing else. So I'm going to quote this hadith. And all of you who are sitting here, or most of you, should take this hadith with you when you go home and think about it. The narrator is Abu Huraira, the famous Sahabi of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said that Qala Qad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said that qala Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have said so this is hadith Qudsi the words are that, that of Allah so very important hadith hadith of Qudsi the words are that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rasulullah is just conveying what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said yabna Adam O oh, the son of Adam now underline this word. Tafarrag. 
تفرغ لعبادتي تفرغ تيك تايم اوت تيك تايم اوت فور ماي ورشيب تيك تايم اوت ذس مينز ذات يو هاف تو تيك تايم اوت هاو هي ويل هيلب يو سو لا سيك تفرغ لعبادتي املا املا صدرك غنى او كما قال I am going to fill your heart with what? The biggest blessing of the world. And that is what? Contentment and peace. Qanaat. Your heart is full of peace. So you take time out for my worship. I will fill your heart with ghina. With contentment, peace. satisfaction with, with with whatever allah had written for you and wa asuddu faqrak and because you are praying salah to me you are doing ibadat i am going to make sure that you don't become poor that poverty does not comes to you so i'll repeat again tafarragh لعبادتي تيك تايم اوت فروم يور سكيدول فور ماي ورشيب املا صدرك غنى اي ام جوينج تو فيل يور هارت وذ كونتينمنت اند بيس واسد فقرك اند اي ام جوينج تو ميك شور ذات يو دونت بيكم فقير يو دونت بيكم يا بور ذن الله سبحانه والا والا تفعل اف يو ويل نوت تيك تايم اوت فور ماي ورشيب فاين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hadith al-Qudsi says I'll make sure that you are always busy in your life always busy in your life and then wala yasuddu faqrak and you will never find contentment and peace you will always feel that man I have less this person has more than me man yes I have so much but still I what i have is lesser than that person so let me try to get more so that i can be equal with that person this is this is faqr this is poverty literally brother this is poverty if you are always looking at those people who have more money than you then you are faqir you are poor person because your heart is not content your your heart is not satisfied with whatever allah gives you so this is the sign of a faqir that you are never satisfied with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so allah says, if you will not take out time for my ibadat i will make sure that your daily schedule is extremely busy busy means busy with this world busy chasing the world busy you know for no reason i mean literally if you see I mean, your bills are being paid. You know, your needs are being fulfilled. But uh, we are running around because we want to fulfill our desires. Our needs have been fulfilled way back. No problem, right? Every every month, our paycheck is good enough to fulfill our needs and our bills. But we want to do extra to fulfill our desires. and in order to fulfill our desires we are sacrificing ibadat we are f- sacrificing no brother this is a person who is sacrificing ibadat in order to fulfill his or her your know, desires you will never ever get time to worship allah subhanahu wa taala you will extreme you will be extremely busy and you yourself will not know why you are so busy right till hatta idha jaa ahadukum al maut that when death will come he will say laalli a'malu salihan fi ma taraktu he will say i wish i had some more time in my life so that i could have done good deeds allah said no i gave you long life 
literally i had given me you a long life but you wasted it you because your your needs were fulfilled why were you running around chasing the world and that also at the expense of ibadat you had no time for to, for for five times salah no time to read quran every day right no no time to study islam nothing so allah is saying you were living like an animal literally animal allah said ulaika kal an'am bal hum adal ulaika hum al ghafilun so this hadith of qudsi brother should be an eye opener if you are not praying salah that if you will not take time out for the worship of allah allah will not give you time you have to take the first step towards allah allah will take two steps after that towards you when you will go to allah walking then allah will come to you running that's why hadith qudsi says tafarragh you have to take time out therefore my dear if a person is extremely busy in uh, the worldly things so that person is a poor person he is not a rich person if a person say that i don't have time to come to the masjid i don't have time to worship brother and sister believe that that person is poor you know how come you don't have time for allah subhanahu wa taala when you know that you were created by allah to worship him so you are living without a purpose your your life uh, you know is being is getting wasted right and in the world what we see in the right now is that most of us if not all our life is kind of a waste because we are not regular worshipper of allah subhanahu wa taala regular worshipper we are occasional worshipper of allah subhanahu wa taala right and this is why allah subhanahu wa taala appreciated those men those muslims who have business to run who have jobs to go to so they they have businesses they have jobs but they have drawn a line i'm going to work for this much hours every day and i, I will turn to allah after that that allah subhanahu wa taala i did my work i for example i worked for 8 hours 10 hours and that's allah i don't want to work further please put barakah in my wealth and i would like to make sure that i don't miss any salah whether i'm at work or i have a business so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said rijalun la tulhihim tijara wa la bay' an dhikrillah those are the real muslims real believers who have businesses to run and they run businesses bay' they have jobs and they go to job every day but these things do not make them forget about that that primary the most important thing that they have to do in their life and that is worship allah subhanahu wa taala so when they are at work they when the time for salah comes they pray there my dear dear brothers and sisters this is the beautiful balance of life that allah subhanahu wa taala had taught us in quran right as our rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that all of you should be self dependent you should earn enough to pay your bills so that you don't ask anyone asking anyone one is something which is very very disliked by allah and rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam but at the same time make a balance work worship allah work and worship allah subhanahu wa taala do not just work 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 and there's no place of allah's worship in your life right so again i will conclude by reminding you about this hadith tafarragh li ibadati amla sadraka ghina 
وأسد فقرك وإلا تفعل عمل يدك شغلا ولم أسد فقرا أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام So my dear brothers and sisters, this hadith is very important. I'll repeat, I'll translate it one more time in English, and then I will conclude. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have said in hadith al-Qudsi, that, O oh human being, take time out for my worship. I will fill your heart with contentment and peace. And faqr of poverty will not come to you. And if you will not take out time for my worship, then I will make sure that you are always busy. Always busy in your worldly life. And your heart will always be the heart of a faqir, a person who is never satisfied and content with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you and me understand this. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nashtaghfirika wa natubu ilayka.